So ptosis, spelled P-T-O-S-I-S, is droopiness of the upper eyelid margin where the lashes come out and hit the colored part of the eye or the iris. And we really gauge ptosis in measurement of the upper eyelid margin and its relationship to the pupil or the black part of the eye. Some children, infants, are even born with droopy lids. In fact, about 3% of the population may be born with a mild uh, congenital ptosis that may need to be corrected at a very early age. To correct that, we sometimes have to perform what's called a frontalis suspension, where we actually attach a silicone band to the connective tissue of the eyelid and then secure that to the frontalis or forehead muscle. That way, when you, the child elevates their brow, it actually helps lift the lid up. That procedure, however, is reserved primarily for people with congenital ptosis, young children, that have poor muscle function, which is an inherited disorder. The grand majority of ptosis repair or droopy eyelid surgery is performed in older patients where the connective tissue that holds the eyelid up, called the levator muscle and the levator aponeurosis, which is like a curtain or a drape in our upper eyelid, stretches out. We can actually make an incision in the folder crease of the upper eyelid, and then I can find that muscle, advance it, and then put stitches in it to shorten the length of the tendon, which in turn raises the lid up. That's commonly employed in conjunction with a blepharoplasty because when we elevate the lid, it actually causes a redundancy or a fold in the skin. And so to avoid that redundancy, it's not uncommon that we would remove some excess eyelid skin at the same time. Ptosis surgery may be done in combination with an upper eyelid blepharoplasty and brow surgery. And so uh, evaluation helps us determine what uh, will best suit a patient. In terms of recovery for uh, ptosis correction, if an, if an incision line is performed on the, uh, in the lid crease of the upper eyelid, occasionally absorbable sutures are used, but sometimes permanent sutures are used as well that require removal one to two weeks following surgery. Patients that undergo ptosis correction can expect to have bruising and swelling for approximately two to three weeks following surgery. Sometimes we don't know the final height of the eyelid for approximately six weeks following surgery because there can be some internal swelling as well.